I'm not counting on no political party. My hope depends nothing but on God. So let's go on our knees serious about prayer. When you go home, read Matthew chapter 6, verse number 6. The disciple asks, the disciples ask God, ask Jesus to teach us how to pray. And Jesus told them, when thou prayest, and taught them how to pray. But in that verse, Jesus said, God, who seeth in secret, will reward thee openly. Saints of God, all of us have some secret prayers. Minister Pearson, there's people. There's prayers that we can't tell nobody about. There's things that's troubling us that we don't talk to our friends or family about. Those. There are some things on my heart my wife don't even know. There are some secret prayers. But this is what Jesus said. He said, God, see it in secret. <laughs> that means he seen you when you went into your closet and you shut the door. He said, I saw you. And the prayers that you pray in secret, he's going to reward you openly. Today when we go on our knees, we're going to do three things. We're going to talk to him. Then we're going to be quiet and let him talk to us. Prayer has to be a two-way conversation. Enough of praying. Jesus, I love you, I love you, Lord, do it, Lord, do it, Lord. Then we get up and leave before he even answers. But if you talk to him, give him time to talk to you. I just heard God say, I want to talk to somebody. Hmm. I want to talk to somebody. He wants you to know right now that he hurt you. Uh, woo, my, 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 my. I'm so glad he heard me. <laughs> woo, my shata, no bo shata. Prayers that you have talked to God about. Prayers that you can't even open your mouth. But he heard the secret. Mm. You don't even have to open your mouth for God to hear you. Isn't it good to have a God that can hear your heartbeat? Isn't it good to have a God that when you don't even open your mouth and all you can just say is, hmm, he knows what that means. Uh, he heard you, he heard you, he heard you, he heard you. We're going to talk to God. Then we're going to be quiet and let him talk to us. Y'all don't mind doing this, do you? And when we finish letting him talk to us, we just gonna give him the praise, confirming that what God has said, that he's faithful to do. As we go to our knees, Minister Gray, Jesus, 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 come on, Jesus, 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 talk to me, Jesus, 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 what's his name? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Talk to me, talk to me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Wow. 
wants to say? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stop by Calvary, Lord, just to say thank you. So good, so awesome. So mighty. Thank you, Lord, for being awesome, for being good. We praise you, we magnify your name. God, you've been our way maker and our mind regulator. 61 years you stopped by my house, touched me and told me one more time. We stopped by the cross today, Lord, just to say thank you. We adore you, Lord. We honor you, we lift you up. We give your name all the praise, the glory, and the honor. We don't want a day to go by, Lord, without just telling you we love you. Mm. We're going to show you in our actions. We're going to show you what our commitment, Lord, to get in your word. Push our place back. Seek your face. Lord, you know the desires of my heart. Mm. You know the visions that you've given this church. We thank you for everyone that you planted in this ministry. Thank you, Lord, for Annette and Jeanette. Thank you, Lord, for Sylvia and Charles. How can we say thank you, Lord Jesus, for Pastor Rita? Thank you, Lord, for mom and dad. Thank you for my sisters and brothers and my in-laws. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the gift of Greg Pearson and Jonathan, Lord. How can we say thank you, Lord, for Monica and Marcus, and the praise team? How can we say thank you for the gifts that you've given this church? Thank you for Deacon Glenn all those, Lord, that you have planted here in this ministry. Oh, God, we promise to give your name the praise. We thank you for Elder Wilson and Margin. We thank you, Lord, for all those, Lord, name by name. We thank you, Lord, for pain. For my brothers, Lord, and my sisters, thank you for health and strength. Help us to maintain the vision and the voice, Lord, that you've given us for this time. Mm. Now, Lord, we're going to be quiet and let you speak to us. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Let God speak. At the same time, one of the ministers at the church that's a preaching machine. He was elevated to assist Bishop Ellis hospital visitation, funerals, Worked in the office, answered the phone with prayer requests. He put the time in, put the work in. Served under my brother-in-law, Pastor Bernard Main, whose wife is here today. God bless you for there. He has supported this ministry since day one. He's had to because his wife is on the praise team. <laughs> But we thank God for him accepting our invitation to be our special Sunday preacher. Put your hands together for the ministry of Pastor David Hall. Come on, you can give it a little bit. Come on, put your hands together. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. God is good.
mercy and grace and all his many, many blessings that he's bestowed upon us. Amen. And we thank God, amen, for this great pastor up and coming. He's on the move. I just admire his steadfastness. His ability amen. to stay in. Ain't no turning back. He's, amen. He's come too far. And he's desired that he's going to be steadfast and unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord because he knows that his labor is not in vain. Anything you do for the Lord, the Lord will repay. Amen. I'm just honored today, amen, to stand here in this holy setting, amen, to come before you. God's been good to me. I don't know about you, but uh, he's been good to me. And when I look back over my life and see just how good God's been, I have to praise him. I heard the praise leader say today you know we come to give God praise but I don't wait till I get to church to give him praise I give him praise when I wake up in the morning oh, because he's worthy to be praised I often time I, I always say that when I when I'm going to preach I say that I, I praise the Lord so much because God proved himself to me some years ago because um, I didn't grow up in a holiness church, didn't know too much about being saved or anything. But my late wife, she, she got saved first before I did. And uh, of course, you know, when she got saved, there was a lot of disturbance in the house because I wasn't ready, amen, to accept the fact that the Lord had come into our life. And so I, I dealt with it and I went through a number of a few months you know, dealing with it. But I've got a lot of witnesses along the line. There, there were people that I knew that were out there. But God had did something wonderful for them in their lives and changed their lives. And I was curious about this thing. I said, Lord, if the thing is real, show me that it's real. And you know, he did that. And I told the Lord from that day forward, I said, Lord, if I can't be real for you, then I won't be real at all. I might as well just turn in my Holy Ghost credentials, amen, and just walk out the door. But he has proven himself that he is real, and that's why I've got to be real for him. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord some praise. Amen, amen. This is Membership Sunday. Amen. Membership Sunday. You know, it's not enough just to become a member of a church, but we want to put your membership up in heaven. Amen. We want to get your, get your membership on the roll up there. So when you stand before the Lord on that great day, he will see your name written in the Lamb books of life. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. In the presence of the Lord. I don't know how much time I've got today. How much I got, preach? Take my time. Amen. Amen. I don't want to be before you too long. Amen. I heard uh, some years ago, one preacher said, he said, now don't make the people happy twice. Happy to see you get up and happy to see you sit down. Amen. So we won't do that today. But I won't be before you too long today. So I would, for those of you who brought your Bibles. Amen. I would like for you to turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. We're going to begin reading there just two verses from your hearing today, verses 51 and 52. I, I must admit to you, I, I, I wrestled with this. I, I mean, I was in my secret closet just trying to find, I said, now, Lord, what can I say to this people today? And as I wrestled and I wrestled and I had uh, put my thoughts on a certain scripture, but I couldn't seem to get the inspiration as I was just meditating on this thing. And so the Lord just, he just switched gears on me and he allowed me to come to this scripture. Amen. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at the 51st verse, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, 
say in a moment, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, incorruptible and we shall be changed. Also turn with me to the book of First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. We're gonna begin reading there at the 13th verse. When you have it, say amen. It reads on this wise, it says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which are asleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For it says there in verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Father, we thank you today for your grace and mercy, for this great opportunity to stand before this people. We ask today, Lord, that you would move in the midst, and as you're moving, Lord, open up the hearts and minds of the hearer. Let them hear, Lord, what thus saith the Lord today. Lord, speak to their hearts. Those who have need of salvation, Lord, let them be pricked in their hearts to realize that this is what they need. We ask even now, Lord, that you would bless everybody here under the sound of my voice. Bless us individually as well as collectively. And Lord, we know that all the praise and glory shall be done. In Jesus' mighty name, we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd just like to draw my thought today from that 52nd verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and just say to you, we are living in the in-a-moment zone. In-a-moment zone. You know why? Because in a moment, we could be gone. Hallelujah. Give God praise. In a moment zone. Amen. Uh, that's, 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 that's exciting to me. Because it's a time that every man and woman should prepare for. When we consider, I won't have any argument about this, but it's been now 2,000 years since Jesus died. Jesus Christ, God who was manifested in flesh, came down to earth to be a propitiation for our sins. Jesus Christ at 12 years old who went to the temple and said to the Pharisees, it's I've got to be about my father's business. Jesus Christ who went about healing and, and delivering and making people whole all the time, who walk in the earth and doing great and mighty things. Jesus Christ, who knew within himself that he came on a mission to go to the cross and die. Jesus Christ, the God of our salvation, who for forsook himself and thought about us as he went to Calvary and he, and he suffered, bled, and died on that day that you and I might have a right to the tree of life. Jesus Christ, who died and rose again on the third day, amen, that we, amen, might have eternal life. And when he went on back to heaven, he came to establish his church. Amen. That mighty church, that mighty spiritual organism. Amen. That he is asking every man and, and trying to get every man to be a part of. But his mission, you know, we, 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 we talk about it. And we who are been in, have been in the church for a number of years, we've gone through, amen, many, many times of hearing certain sermons about Jesus is coming back again. We've been inundated time and time again, and we've heard countless sermons about Jesus coming back, coming back again. And it is true, he is coming back. Peter and Paul, you know, if you read in their writings, they talked about the coming of the Lord. And they believe within their hearts that 
they would be alive at the coming of the Lord. But as they began to see, as time began to draw near, that they wouldn't be around to see him coming. But Paul left this eloquent testimony, amen, when he was about to depart this life. He said, he said there on that occasion, he said, I am now ready to be offered. I fought a good fight. And the Lord, the Lord of glory, has a crown of righteousness just waiting for me. And this has got to be for all of us who are in Christ Jesus. I know, you know, we look for the coming of the Lord, but it's not to say that we're going to be around when he's coming. But either way, whether we go through the grave or whether we go through the air, we know that we are going to be with the Lord. The Bible says that if we must see death, amen, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I get excited about that because that is the blessed hope. Amen. Amen. Oftentimes we go to funerals and we look around and we see those who have no hope. And our heart goes out to them because we, you and I, who know that there's something more than this life. Amen. That's why we don't just live for this life, but we live for the life to come. Amen. Because I don't place any merit in this life because this world has told us that everything is about material gain and things. And we can't invest in material things and gain because all of these things are going to pass away. Amen. But I believe that the word of God will be around forever. And whatever is written in the book, amen, is going to emphasize our lives. Amen. He said he's going to come back again. And I've got to live and die with the fact that he is coming again. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. So Peter and Paul, they, they, they thought about this thing. I I mean, we want to be around when he comes, but, but he did not come, but he is coming. Now, when we think about it, there were three significant events that have preceded the catching away of the church. There have been two. Firstly, when we think about it, we think about the great man Enoch. In the book of Genesis, chapter number five, we read about Enoch. Enoch was just one of the old patri patriots of old. And the Bible says that Enoch walked with God. Amen. I can imagine on a certain day when Brother Enoch say, he spoke to his wife and said, well, I'm going down, amen, to the corner store. I got to pick up some bread and some, some cheese. And so he goes down to the, to the market. And, and, and while he's on his way, the Lord just took him. And he was seen no more. In other words, he walked out and he walked into the inner moment zone. In a moment, he was gone. He was, he was nowhere to be seen. Amen. That's going to be a great day for us who are in Christ Jesus. And then there was another gentleman. Uh, I believe it was in 2 Kings chapter 1. We talked about Elijah. Elijah the Tisbite, uh, the great prophet of old. Elijah who had done so many great miracles. And amen. Went down to the widow's house and, and, and had her to bake him a little something. And, and the oil just kept on going on for a number of, of months. We talk about Elijah, the great man who went down to Mount Karma and he killed all the prophets of Baal, 450 of them. Elijah, when the word came to Elisha, the man, the young man who was following him, the word came that your master is going to be taken up in a few days. Everywhere they went, he went down to Bethel and, and he told Elijah, he said, Elijah, look, uh, no, don't go with me, man. Just stay here. He said, no, by the word of the Lord, I got to stay with you, amen, until then. And as he followed him around, you know, when you... It's kind of hard to find a real man of God. But I tell you, when you find somebody that's genuine, somebody that's true, somebody who has the ability and you know that they're walking with God, you've got to latch on to that kind of man of God, that woman of God, because there are so many perpetrators in the church. But when you walk into somebody you know, amen, got your back. Somebody you know who's going to pray for you. Somebody you know is going to do 
go and sacrifice for you. That's the kind of people you want to attach to. And so Elisha attached himself to Elijah. He knew that something was special about this man of God. And as he went here and there, I'm going down to Bethel. I'm going over to Jericho. I'm going over here to the Jordan. He told him, just stay. But no, no, I got to go with you wherever you go. And so much so that he just, I guess he just stuck to him like glue. And he said to them, well, I'll tell you this. Tell me what do you want me to do for you before I go? I know you heard the commotion that I'm going to leave, but tell me before I take my way, my, my exit out of here, let me know what is it that you want me to do. Elijah said to him, look, look here, Elijah, I want you to give to me a double portion of your spirit. Because I've seen something in you. I've seen that you're powerful. I've seen the miracles that you work. I want to do greater work. So will you just please give to me, amen, a double portion of your spirit. And then about, I guess, a few days later, it happened. Oh, Elijah now began to get ready to get up out of here. The Lord came and got him in a chariot of fire. In other words, he went into the inner moment zone. He looked around and he was gone amen fly into the sky out of sight that's exciting times amen we living in exciting times amen glory to God but we see now on the agenda the next great event will be the catching away of the church hallelujah that's what we're living for Amen. You're not just coming here every Sunday just to come, but you come in here to show to people that the God that we serve is real. The God that we serve is genuine. The God that we serve is true. Amen. We don't just come to play church as you said, but we've come to have church because the main, the main, the main source of the church, the main commitment of the church is to reach out and save those who are lost. We who are saved, we are already healed, but it's the man on the street, it's the woman, a man who's caught up in drugs. This is who we are reaching out to. Amen. And we've got to get back to basics. We've got to get back where God would have us to be. And so the church now, I believe that we're living in the last of the perilous times. In this time of eschatology. Amen. When everything is coming to a head. The thing about what I talk about is the three influences in the world. There are three factors that comes in to influence the church. And first there is the world. The world with all of its motives. The world with all of its doctrines. The world with all of its greed. The world with all of its pulling. The world with all of its hatred. And the world has the audacity to try to come into the church. Oh my God. But we should, amen, we should be one who, who who, who gives the church the way of identity, not the world coming in trying to dictate to us. The church has come in with its political correctness. Amen. Telling the preacher what to preach and not what to preach. But we've got to get back to what God said us to do. We cannot be influenced by the world and the things in the world because we are not of this world. And God said that if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. But I have to tell you today I love Jesus and I'm not loving the things of the world because the world is going to pass away but we what she would do we should be trying to convert the world amen to let them see that you just can't walk up in here and bring that kind of influence here because we are saved sanctified and holy people of God amen and we don't bend bound to the beggarly elements of this world we've moved on for that we're looking for higher ground for something better we're looking for God to bless we're looking for God man, to bring some folk out I can't get now now and convince my sermon amen because somebody's going to get offended I can't sit around and water down the gospel of Jesus Christ when God said preach in season out of season reprove and rebuke with all long suffering and doctrine didn't he say it 
Amen. We just can't preach a Mickey Mouse gospel. We got to preach the gospel that's full of power. It's full of strength. The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Come on, give God some praise. I won't be affected by the world. God brought me out of the world. He brought me out to be saved and sanctified and filled up with the Holy Ghost. My trust is in nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. On Christ, the solid rock I stand and all the... So the world is now is trying to influence the church. But we want to go a step further now and deal with the flesh. Oh, the flesh, the flesh. I could be so much further if it was not for my flesh. The flesh with all its wants and the flesh with all of its needs. You got to lay him down at night. You got to feed him bacon and eggs. And you got to get up in the morning and wash his face. And you got to bathe him. You got to shave and you got to do his hair the flesh the flesh the flesh who has want nothing to do with God the Bible says to be carnal minded is to be dead amen but to be spiritual minded is to have life everlasting I can't let the flesh dictate to me because when I would do good evil was always present oh wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from the body of this death Thank God for Jesus Christ coming and filling our hearts and minds with power in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't live to the flesh, but I live to the Spirit of God. Amen. Because that's my way out of here. Because if I live to the flesh, then I'm going to die by the flesh. The flesh ain't going nowhere. You ain't got to worry about that. The flesh is going to somewhere, a hole in the ground. That's where the flesh is going to go. But the flesh is trying to keep you here. But you've got to get out of your flesh and come to know that the Spirit of God wants to change you. He wants to rearrange you. He wants to make you whole. He wants to mold you and shape you and make you into what he would have you to be. That's the spirit of God that I'm talking about. Glory to God. Oh, now we're dealing with these factors in the world. The world with all of its schemes and all of its amen doings. And didn't we have to deal with the devil? My God, the devil. That in Cognito devil, that devil that's always hiding in a corner back there conniving and strategizing how he's going to get his next victim. The devil has been around for so long and he's working yet in the earth. He's doing his best to keep every one of you, amen, from getting to the kingdom of God. The devil is working in people. He's working in our Congress. He's working in the legislature. That's why we can't get anything done. That we got to deal with the devil. But I'm here to tell the devil, I'm here to serve notice to the devil. I won't bow to you because there's something greater in me than that that is in the world. And that's the power of God. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We got to deal with the devil because the devil, he's one that will not quit. He's always moving. He's vigilant. Amen. He's always on his job. But the Bible says you got you cannot be ignorant. Amen. To the devil's devices. That's why you got to spend time in your word. That's why you got to spend time studying because you can know the enemy. Let God bless you and give you the sagacity amen to be able to discern whether this person is of God or whether this person is of the devil but it's going to take time because the devil is crafty he's had over 2,000 years experience so he knows what we want amen some say well you know I ain't attracted to her but he will send you the right one amen you got to be careful that's why you got to be on God when it comes to the devil. Great glory to God. Amen. In the hallelujah. When we talk about it, <clears throat> as we have mentioned, we are living in the 
in a moment's own. Yes, we are. And pretty soon we don't have to worry about what's going on anyway because we're living in the in a moment zone. When you think about zones, a zone has a specific purpose. We can think about time zones. We've got Eastern, Central, we got Mountain, and we got Pacific. All of them purpose is to keep time. Amen. When a person scores in football, he's always ended up in the end zone. Amen. That's a place of celebratory, a celebratory occasion, right? Amen. And then there is the no-fly zone. You just can't fly your jet anywhere. Amen. You've got to be careful. And then there's the demilitarized zone. But I'm not talking about any of the, those zones. I'm talking about the inner moment zone. Every day I wake up, I'm walking in the inner moment zone. Because God could come back at any time. And that's why I remain ready. I'll be ready to go. I'll be ready to ride. Because I've come through too much hell. I've gone through too much disappointment to miss that great day you don't think that I'm going to give my salvation up you can take my house you can take my car you can take my money but you ain't getting my Holy Ghost you ain't getting my salvation that's the most important thing that I have with me everything else is going to pass away when I leave here my Holy Ghost is going with me and the works that I have they're going to follow me so I'm not caught up in the world but I'm caught up in the fact that I'm walking in the inner moment zone and it could happen in a moment oh glory to God hallelujah hallelujah it could happen amen and if you want to get into the amen in a moment zone this is what you got to do you got to get the Holy Ghost you just can't walk amen in this zone without some power because you can't get out of here if you don't have the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost is that magnetic power that's going to be able just like a magnet it's attraction it's a spiritual attraction to the saint of God who is embodied with the Holy Ghost so when God comes back and cracks the sky he's going to be like a big magnet just waiting to take us all up hallelujah hallelujah you got to get the Holy Ghost if you're going to be in the rapture you got to get it no if ands but somebody because there is no way that you're going to walk in the inner moment zone if you don't have it you got to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for remission of sin I ain't backing down with this because I know it's true and I ain't hating on nobody because I know you need it amen time is moving on and we are moving with time God has been so gracious to us what he's done he's allowed us to come into his world but what he says to us he says now I'm going to let you in my world but you've got to realize you're not going to be here long so what God does he gives us a certain amount of time to get it all together your world God didn't put you in his world just for you to focus on this world but there's a spiritual side of you there's a spiritual man in you who needs to be nurtured who needs to be built it up we go to the gym and we we pump up these bodies we're out there pushing iron and, and lifting weights amen just to magnify the outward man but what about the inward man the outward man is perishing every day every day we live he's perishing and you've got to get the inward man in the gym amen because he's the one that's going to last hallelujah I think about as we get older now as we move forward amen to the coming of the Lord I said to myself when you get older you shouldn't be getting less but you should be getting better because all the time you're getting older amen that inward man should be getting stronger amen you should be feeling a pulling there because it's about to break out amen when they put this body in the ground amen that inward man on the inside should be strong amen because of what we've gone through because of what we've endured because what we had to go with and go with this and go with that when the inward man becomes
become strong in us, then we are able to look back and see that it was God who did it all. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. But we live in the world now. This world that's not human friendly. We live in this world with all of the disasters. When we look, think about Irma, we talk about, think about Maria. All oh, these hurricanes and now we got fires over in California. I mean, it's getting bad all around. Amen. Young men, young women dying in the street. Amen. People caught up in drugs. I mean, our world is going to hell in a hell ha a handbasket. Amen. It's not time, amen, to back up, but it's time to come forward. It's time to realize that God is getting ready for us on that great day. God is preparing his church. So preachers, don't back down when it comes to preaching. You preach the truth of God. You let people know what thus saith the Lord. You let people know what's going to help them. You don't preach that you can get another car. You don't preach to them that they can get a bigger house. You don't preach to them that they can have all the money in the bank. And there's nothing wrong with that. But first get God in the middle. Get him in the center of who you are. Because he's the one that you're going to need when you lose all your money. When your house burns down. When you don't have a car. God said I'll be right there. After you lose everything, I'll be right there to lift you up. I'll be right there to console you. I'll be right there to provide every one of your needs according to my riches and glory. And so we're going on now. Amen. And we're living in the perilous times. We're living in times now, amen, where people are just, they just don't know where to go. Amen. But God says to us, he says, endure hardness as a good soul. Soldier. Amen. No matter what you got to face, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen. Paul picked it up. I believe it was in Romans chapter 8, verse 18. He says to us, he says, I reckon that the suffering of this present time shall not com be compared to the glory that shall be revealed unto us. I don't mind going through. I don't mind dealing with my trials. I don't mind going through tribulations because I know this is just a light affliction. Amen. I got something better coming on. And so then now as we go in and we look at the scripture, it says to us, it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 4, chapter 4 verse 16 he says the Lord himself shall descend from heaven uh, let me just back it up he said brethren I would not have you to be ignorant concerning those who are asleep those who sleep in Christ Jesus he said that the Lord will bring them with him amen so when mama and daddy died they did not go to the cemetery but they went to be in the presence of the Lord and what the Lord's going to do he's going to bring all all the saints back with him when he cracks the sky. He said the Lord himself uh, not Gabriel, not Michael, but the Lord himself is going to descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. I'm telling you, I'm staying in the inner moment zone because I can't afford to miss out on that great occasion when Jesus comes back again I want to be ready to ride every night and then I can feel all oh, the quivering I can feel the quickening and sometimes I have to just practice a little bit amen practice my uplift oh when he cracks the sky I want to be ready I want to be ready to ride with him that's why I'm dedicating my life that I will walk in the night in a moment zone I don't want to get out of this zone I want to stay ready I would ask the church today what is your problem why don't you want to come with us why don't you want to give yourself to Jesus and come in and be saved so that you can walk in the inner moment zone ain't no sense in you coming to church amen and then walking out the same but God has something in store for you if you just give yourself to him and come on and get saved time is winding up don't think because you're young amen 
you can't die. Don't think you because you're young, you got all the time in the world. But the day is today. The day right now is the day of salvation. And you should come and let God fill you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's been a long time. Those of us who have been in the church over 30 years, it's been a mighty long time. And we've come through great trials and tribulations. We've come through some heartaches along the way. Some days we felt like we didn't want to give in. Uh, we wanted to give up. There are many days I've walked into church and I didn't feel like praising him. But it's something about the Spirit of God. It's something about this God on the inside. When you go in with your own mindset, he will put his mindset on you. Amen. When you didn't feel like praising him, he would get on you. He would move on you. Oh, the quickening. You can't help yourself. You would give God glory because you know God was in charge. And that's why I say to you today, you've got to get ready. You've got to get ready to walk in the inner moment zone. Hallelujah. It's not about this world. It's not about this world. The world is passing away. The world is passing away. You've got to prepare yourself. Jesus is coming back in a moment. In a twinkling of an eye. He's coming as a thief in the night. And you want to be ready. Oh, I know you heard about it oh, for many, many years. And you've had the scoffers come say, well, oh, where is his coming? Since the fathers fell asleep, he still hasn't come. But don't you fret. As surely as the word of God is what it is. If the word of God is true. Then he that shall come. Will come. How many want to be ready when he comes? How many walk in the inner moment zone? You got to prepare. You got to prepare. We got to prepare to get out of here. I can't miss out. I got to go. I, I'm sorry. You don't want to go? Well, uh, it's on you. But I've made up my mind a long time ago. I got to go with Jesus. He's been too good. And what he has in store for us is so much more. going to be eternal. God is calling. He's calling you, young man, young woman. There's no excuse. Tomorrow's not promised to you. It's not a promise to me. But God says, come now. Come now. It's pertinent. It's pertinent. Come and let the Lord bless you. What a shame it is to live in this world 80, 90 years and still not know the Lord. He says to us, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth before the dark days come. on your back. Don't take much. But God will love you in spite of you. He will love you with all of your deficiencies. He will love you exclusively. There's no greater love than God's love. I beg you. You've got to prepare to go. Don't worry about us by the grave but whether we go by the rapture we're in we're in 
we made preparations years ago. We heard the preacher preach, and the preacher preached with such a thought, so much so that it convicted our hearts. And we had to come, crying, moaning, because we felt the need. You got to feel the need for this. all your talents and your gifting to God and let him use you. Well, somebody would say, well, you know, I can't make no money in there. You know, it's all about the money. It's all about the paper. That might be true. But it's all something about God. He's able to multiply what you have. Little becomes much when it's placed in the best of your life. Is there one here today? Is there one? We have ministers. Those who will pray with you. Whatever your need is, you can come. Come on, let the Lord bless you. Remember this. living in these last of the last days in this time of eschatology well you know that our world has been turned upside down you see so much commotion government acting up seems like everything is running amok weather weather just done going crazy how many people have lost their lives don't think you're powerful don't think you're invincible fragile human beings living in a body and in an instance you can be gone I think the devil has done such a job on our other <clears throat> on the other people on the other group what the devil has done down through the years he has deceived the other people so much to believe that skin color is significant superior about any man's skin color. Because if you cut white skin, it's going to bleed. If you shoot white skin, it's going to be punctured. So the devil has deceived down through the years, generations of people to believe that they are so much better. But no man is any good without God. Remember, the devil is the planner of hatred. He's the one working behind the scenes. He's working in the minds and hearts of people to take so many people out. Don't underestimate the devil. But this is why God gives you power. He gives you the anointing and authority. You don't let the devil come in and rule your house. You don't let anything come into your house, young man. You got to cover your children. You got to cover your family. You got to plead the blood over them when they leave the house every day. The devil ain't playing. We ain't playing. I'll rise up with my Holy Ghost indignation and start some rebuking. I don't take no stuff. I have zero I have zero tolerance for any kind of mess. Yeah. You don't speak to me. I speak to you once or twice. You don't want to speak to me? So what? I'm gone. I don't need you. I don't need your salutations. How you feel about me? God's made me. I am who I am by the grace of God. See, my calling is a higher calling. I don't look to the beggarly elements here in this world, but I've got something.
something great happen. Come on and walk in this in a moment soon. Because in a moment, you could be God. Don't say that I'll call you and tell you on October the 15th, 2017. It's up to you. Anybody need prayer today? God bless you.